So this is a reasonably expensive piece of equipment that we've had the luxury of being able to use. And while this isn't really a review channel, we thought we'd talk about it a little bit and these types of machines. So this is the Philobot EX6. Uh, we got ours a couple years ago uh, that we used for experimentation in small extrusion runs, both to test colors and new materials and that kind of thing. So this is designed to be a lab benchtop uh, device. Though uh, many print farms or individuals have put, got these types of machines in or the EX2 um, in order to make small runs of filament for their own machines. But since this is fairly rare, we wanted to get in kind of a lot of depth with it. So overall, the machine is a single screw extrusion machine, which allows you to extrude 175 uh, millimeter diameter filament. And you can change out that die for different sizes if you want to do it. But 175 is universal, so that's what we use. Uh, you have four heating ranges. So you have the entry and then the two zones down the line. These heating zones allow you to actually change the properties of the material if you're really into extrusion, which is again, why this is kind of a laboratory model extruder. Most people extruding just standard PLA don't need this much control. Those individual zones also have cooling in order to make sure that the machine doesn't overheat or cause jams. And then you have the hopper in the back that you fill up with the beads in order to go through it. Uh, this hopper holds about one and a half kilograms worth of material. So you have to constantly refill. We actually uh, designed and implemented a, a larger hopper at one point so that we could actually run a, a significant amount of filament at a time. You have the speed controller in the back and then start, stop, and power buttons. This machine is made in Vermont, I think is where Philobot is set up, and it is a US made machine. So it's actually very high quality um, and seems to work pretty well for what it's intended for, for lab use. Here's the thing. We don't really use it for lab use. At certain periods of time, we did use this to actually produce fairly significant quantities of material. Um, both during the pandemic and onward from there, we actually got ours in 2020. Um, so what we wanted to do with this was actually see how long it actually lasted. This machine does not work anymore. It has a, a fatal flaw inside of it where it's not physically able to extrude material anymore. It's been cleaned, it's been tuned, the motor's basically burned out or the gearbox. Um, it burnt out at about 3,000 kilograms worth of material. Uh, this machine has a warranty for only one year, which is actually a warranty that's a little bit short for the type of machinery that this is. If you buy a CNC machine or something of similar quality and customer base, you expect a much longer warranty than that. Now, admittedly, with an extruder, you have morons pulling out the screw and cleaning it wrong and throwing dirt inside of it that tears it all up and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of where cases where poor operation can ruin this type of machine, it was not operated poorly. We have quite a bit of experience with how to use extrusion devices, both through our other extruders and through the printer farm itself. We know what filament is. Uh, we have a history of how to work with plastics. So this machine just simply wore out after 3000 spools. Your miles may vary, but Ultimately, that's a very short amount of time for a machine like this. Uh, if we were actually producing filament for ourselves, it basically just broke even on cost with the cost savings for the filament itself, for the raw materials and everything else. The amortization across those spools pays for the machine. So if you're actually making material for yourself with this machine, it's really not worth it. It's way easier to just buy it almost straight off of Amazon and use that rather than deal with the hassle of the machine and the upfront cost of the machine. So would we ever get one of these again? No, we wouldn't. We maybe if we were really getting into specific color testing where we wanted a very small extrusion line, we would do that. But this machine is too expensive for the actual ROI that it gives unless you're doing that very highly specific sort of research based kind of stuff. Um, and it's not really viable at all for production of filament based on the tests that we've done by burning out this machine and using it until it quit. The warranty is too short and the lifespan of the machine, which is a reasonably simple machine, just wasn't really there. So if you're doing experimentation, great machine, it's a great benchtop model and the whole setup is actually good. But if you're planning to use this and intend to use it for multiple years, um, 
trying to run it at max capacity the whole time and use it until it quits, it, it doesn't really work for that. Regular extrusion lines are a better performer and quite frankly, you can find some that are of similar cost. So it's not really a machine that you would want to really use. So let us know down in the comments if there's other topics that you'd like us to talk about. Uh, we have access to this kind of machinery that is exclusive to kind of print farms. A lot of folks don't really get to look at this kind of thing. So let us know if there's other types of machinery or components of the print farm that we can talk about or about the industry in general. Have a great day, everybody.